The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some independent Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to healthy living and weight loss will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. In addition, this audio may contain income or earnings representations of some independent Optavia coaches. Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results from successful sales efforts, which requires hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan, which differs from the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Well, good evening and welcome to the Optavia Habits of Health Community Time. I'm Shirley Mast. I'm an independent certified Optavia coach, and it is my absolute honor to be able to host this call for you tonight. We're going to be talking about optimizing your surroundings. Now, for some of you, this topic, it never even occurred to you that your surroundings would make a difference or an impact on your health. But I'll tell you, I have learned so much over the last several years, well, almost Goodness, it's been quite a while since my health journey started. And I've learned so much about how my surroundings, what's going on around me, what go, when what's going on inside my head will impact um, the health. So grab a tablet, grab a pen. I think we're gonna have some things tonight that you wanna take notes on. We've got some people that are gonna be sharing their stories. You won't wanna miss this. Um, and I'll tell you, I came to this program personally initially because I had a lot of weight to lose. I lost over 200 pounds on this program. And because I had the tools and the ongoing support, and because I've learned a thing or two about optimizing my surroundings, I'm not afraid the weight's coming back. And we're gonna give you some tips tonight that will help you not only create a healthier environment around yourself, but also give you the confidence to learn how to create long-term health. So coming up this evening, we've got a couple different topics or a couple different sections to this call. We'll be talking about mindset, uh, looking at positive connections to support and enhance your journey, and then skill set. So when you understand a little bit more about how your, how your emotional system works, we're going to talk a bit about the hot or go system and the cool or no system, more on that later. Um, and then we're going to also give you some action steps. And I'll tell you right now, First of all, congratulations for making the time to be on this call and to invest in your health. But if you come to this call and you only listen and learn things, but don't ever apply it, then nothing much changes, right? So we're going to give you some specific strategies to help you keep moving forward in your health. Um, actually, as we get this started, it's always really fun for us to get to see, uh, we're going to put a pop a poll up here. It's fun for us to get to see who's actually on the call. So what we'd love to know is, are you a client, um, a, co a coach, a client, or a guest? Now coaches, I know you are also a client, but if you're a coach, mark off the coach box. Um, if you're a client, mark off the, the client box. And if you're a guest, mark off the, the guest box. Um, and it just helps us to know who's here. And actually, I'd love, just because I'm curious, put into the chat box, if this is your very first habits of health time, put a one in the chat box. I'd love to know if this is your first time. We're, we're just delighted to have you here. So this evening on the call, we're going to be referencing heavily the habits of health transformation that was a uh, system that was created by Dr. Wayne Scott Anderson. Dr. A is the co-founder of our company and New York Times bestselling author, but he's also a physician who um, was a 10th board certified critical care physician of the country and helped to pioneer the subspecialty of critical care. And what he found was, you know, he was doing such fantastic work in helping people respond to disease, but he said, you know, what I really want to do is help people learn how to create health. And he's devoted his career to that. So we will be referencing heavily tonight the life book, which is what our clients are all using as they're moving forward on their health journey. But you'll also know, you also need to know that there's a website available to you. If you go to habitsofhealth.com, you'll find a ton of resources there. We also have a free app that anyone can use that will allow you to start tracking as you install your habits. And so if you go to wherever you download apps, 
and search for habits of health or Dr. A's habits of health, you'll find it there. So as we move forward this evening, um, and you might be curious about this life book and think, oh, wonder, wonder what's about that. You know, talk to whoever it is that invited you into this call. They can give you more information on that. Now we're going to put a, um, and I'm going the wrong direction of my slides. Boy, that doesn't help at all, does it? <laughs> so here we go. So in element five in the life book, we're going to be covering that this evening, and we're going to talk about looking at your surroundings and how you can start creating the environment around you, the people, the places, the things that will help to impact your health. We're gonna also talk about how to create a micro environment of healthy relationships. For some of you, this is a new idea. I know it would have been for me early in my journey. I didn't realize how much my relationships were gonna impact this. We're also going to give you tools and resources and tips to help you improve your relationships. And, and I got to tell you guys, there's a limit to how deep we can go this evening, but we're going to at least give you a good introduction to it and then go get a life book and dig in a little bit deeper. We're going to also take a look at the value of community surrounding yourself with like-minded people um, because you're going to find that that's going to be really critical on your journey to health. In the life book, Dr. A says, he has this quote, and he says, relationships are critical to everything we do in life. We are hardwired to be social, and our sense of connection, belonging, and attachment to other people is one of the most fundamental of all human needs. And I'm, I'm betting that most of you are sitting there nodding your heads and saying, yep, totally true. But, but you might be thinking, well, okay, so how do I use that in order to be able to build a stronger environment around myself? Some of this comes down to your mindset. And what you're going to find is, as you can enhance your current relationships and connections, it will help you to progress on your journey. I know for me personally, as I got started on my journey to health, I realized there were some relationships in my life that were really not helping me to move forward in my health. Um, and some of you may have found that as well. In fact, before we put this next poll up, what I'd like you to do is take one moment and think about who are the five people in your life that are closest to you. Okay, like take a moment to think that out. Count them out in your finger. Who are the five people in your life who are closest to you? Because, you know, we tend to become like the people that we hang out with most. Let's go ahead and put the poll up now. And here's an opportunity for you to respond because I would like you to think about those five people that you just thought of and evaluate, okay, of those five people that you spend the most time with, how many of them are healthier than you are? Now coaches, there's a category for you to respond, clients or in guests, there's a category for you to respond. So if you're a coach and, you're, and your first poll option would be, three to five of those people are healthier than I am. Or I'm a coach and zero to two of those people are healthier than me. Or I'm a client and a, or a guest and three to five of those people are healthier than me. Or I'm a client or a guest and zero to two of those people are healthier than me. And as soon as you click on your, your answer, the poll will go away and we'll get to look at those results here very, very shortly. But while we're waiting for those poll results, I have somebody that I'd really like you guys to meet. Um, Nathan Claycomb is a friend of mine. We've been, oh, we've been friends for years and we're just delighted that he decided to join us on this journey to health and also as a coach. Um, he's been supporting a lot of clients and coaches and he's just been an absolute pleasure to work with. But I asked him to come on this evening and share a little bit about what he's learned about creating healthier relationships and how that has impacted his health. Nathan? Yeah, hello everyone. Thank you so much, Shirley. Um, I began my health journey more than two years ago and my amazing wife was incredibly supportive. I had the opportunity to even coach her and my stepmom on their journeys, but not everyone in my life was as supportive. And you may find that too along your journey. I heard things like, oh, you can have just one piece of cake and you don't wanna develop an unhealthy relationship with food. That last one stuck with me because I already had an unhealthy relationship with food. <laughs> so I was a stress eater. Uh, food wasn't fuel, it was a coping mechanism for me. And where did most of my stress come from? It wasn't spreadsheets, it was people. Uh, if you know me, I love people. I am passionate about relationships. It wasn't until my mindfulness around healthier habits increased 
that my awareness around unhealthy relationships increased as well. And I realized that not everyone around me was inspiring me to become my best self. In some cases, they were even holding me back. Um, so that's how I felt at the time. Like I didn't know what to do with that. So I plugged into the support of my coach and then element five in the life book. And I realized that people can only sabotage my health goals if I give them the power to do so. Like no one was force feeding me cheesecake, right? Um, no one can, self, uh, can sabotage this. I love this element because it reminded me that I'm in charge of how I allow others' actions to influence me. So once I had a mental awakening, I got crystal clear on my, my physical goals, my mental goals, my financial goals, and I talked with my coach for accountability and then dug into element five again and took a few key action steps. So I wanna share those action steps with you tonight. Um, I identified the cup fillers in my life, the people who wanted to grow forward, the people who were uh, encouraging my own journey. And then I identified those who were comfortable living in dishealth. Um, I, when I noticed that when I spent time with those in dishealth, I was more tempted to fall back into old habits. So I decided to do two things. Um, I became very intentional about surrounding myself and spending time with the cup fillers in my life the people who are healthier than me, the people who are more emotionally intelligent than me, who are wiser than me. I want to spend time with people that encourage me to grow and learn with me. And frankly, the Optavia community is a huge part of that group in my life. Secondly, and this can be the challenging part, right? I began to distance myself from those who didn't support my deliberate journey toward optimal health. Now, let me be clear. Um, I love people. I love my family and friends. I did not connect, uh, cut somebody out of my life, but I did add some boundaries. I added boundaries that say, I'm no longer going to let the negativity and the derailing thoughts take up emotional real estate on my property. I'm going to build a chain link fence between me and those that are not moving me forward. And I'm going to wave at them and love them through it. If they want to grow with me, they can come on through the gate and join me on this side of the fence. Um, but I want to be continually improving my health and be emotionally invested in those who want to be their best selves too. Those are my people. And you know what happened? My response to stress drastically changed and the healthy habits are now dominating my life daily. Thanks so much for giving me the time to share, Shirley. This is a great night tonight. Well, you know, that's excellent, Nathan. And I got to, you know, guys, at the very beginning, I said, get a tablet, you're gonna to wanna to take notes. The host of the call is taking notes. I love what you said, Nathan, about friends can only sabotage me if I give them the power to do so. Guys, if you didn't write that down, write that down right now. That's going to be really, really helpful to know. And actually, let's do this. Let's pull the poll back up again. I'd love to see those poll results um, before we move on because I, I want to see if what I think the results will be actually are. Okay, so for those, I'm, I'm going to read through the results, especially for those who are watching the, the webinar later, listening to the podcast later. So when you think about the five people you spend the most time with, how many are healthier than you? Coaches have, uh, well, like those coaches will say three to five are healthier than me, about 11%. Um, coaches would say zero to two are healthier, about 44%. Um, our clients, actually the clients and coaches, the, the, the stats run pretty close. A client saying that clients and guests are saying three to five are healthier than me. That's 14%. And clients and guests that would say zero to two are healthier than me is about 31%. And, and I'll tell you guys, I'd encourage you to think that through about who are the people in your life that are, have that opportunity to speak into your life. Um, in, in our, um, in the life book, Dr. A goes on to talk a little bit more about listing your friends and taking a look at who your, who your friends are. And he also talks about who, who you are, your accomplices. And you're thinking, I don't know who's an accomplice. Well, I'll tell you this. A friend is somebody that will help you on your journey. An accomplice will help you get into trouble. Okay. So you might find that as you list your five closest friends, some of them might actually hit the accomplice list. And you're going to find that having like-minded people around you is a really powerful motivator. It is for me, one of the reasons why coaching is so beneficial. Like Nathan said, a lot of my healthy community is this coaching community. And it's been 
massively helpful for me in my own health journey. Now, if you were on the um, Habits of Health community time two weeks ago, you would have heard Amber, Amber Smithson introduce this idea of being above or below the line. And if you weren't on that call, oh my word, guys, go back and watch it. It was stellar. But she talks about the concept, or Dr. A talks in, in the life book about the concept of being above or below the line. We all function above and below the line throughout the day. But above the line is an open, curious growth mindset. So that like, even when you're facing a challenge, you're saying, hmm, what can I learn here? A below the line perspective is closed, it's defensive, and it's got a whole lot of I want to be right. Any of you ever been there? I mean, like I, I used to live with a whole, whole lot of I want to be right. Um, and what we find is if you can be a little more clear on where you are so that you recognize when you're ready to grow or when you're feeling defensive, it'll be really helpful for you. So we talked about that we we're going to have a give you a little bit, a bit of a skill set tonight. And one of the things we want to talk about is this hot or go system that Dr. A talks about in the life book or the cool or no, that not, it's not N-O, it's K-N-O-W, like the knowing, okay? The cool or no, hot or go. Um, the go system back in ancient times helped us to survive, okay? Like in ancient times, if you've got a saber-toothed tiger, tiger running after you, you really don't want to be sitting there rationally thinking about it. You want to be high energy, high tail and out of there, right? Okay. Um, and so when that system is functioning, it's going to shut off your cognitive abilities to put all of your energy into outrunning that tiger. Okay. No thinking, just action. If you've got toddlers, you see a lot of this at your house. If you have teenagers, you might see this at your house too, all right? Now, alternatively, that cool or no system, knowing, okay, is run by our thinking brain. The body stays in a relaxed state where we can thrive, and this is the habits of health default state. So what you'll find is that in this day and age, we really don't have saber-toothed tigers running after us very often. I, I haven't had any really in any time in my recent past but I do have things that I perceive as a threat, okay? And sometimes it can trigger that go system in ways that just really aren't beneficial because I really don't have to run fast if somebody just made a snide remark to me, right? I don't have to have that kind of high energy. Um, and so most of those perceived threats really are mostly to our ego, but they'll trigger that go system when what we really need in that moment is that no, that knowing system. So like, for instance, your spouse comes, comes home from work, says something snarky, and you think, my word, what's, what's the matter with him? And you get all bent out of shape. You grab an adult beverage to get you through the evening, and things just kind of spiral out of control. And then later on, you realize that the reason your spouse responded that way was because he had an incredibly hard day at work. He needed to fire his friend, and it was a really tough day. He didn't even realize that what he said to you pushed those buttons. So if you can in that moment, do what Dr. A teaches, that stop, challenge, choose. Stop in the moment, get self-aware and challenge. Okay, what's going on here? Well, my spouse said something that seemed really snarky and I'm really mad at him. Well, okay, you get a choice in that moment. And when you can get more self-aware and more deliberate and engage that cool or no system, you'll end up with an out outcome that's better. So that that self-awareness will help you recognize those emotional triggers to look at, okay, what's happening here? And it gives us the power over the emotions so that we really can make the choices that we want to have for a, for a healthier outcome. Um, so as we move on here, um, I want to give you a chance to see a little bit more that, oh, actually there's a quote here that Dr. A talks about in there he, where he says, check yourself before you wreck yourself. And it makes us all sort of chuckle a little bit. But the truth is, if you want to improve the control of your behavior, it's really important to figure out what we can change in our relationships so that you can have the supportive relationships in your journey to optimal health. Um, now, one of the things that will be really helpful as you're starting to become more self-aware are these four questions that he includes in element five. And this is another thing you're going to want to write down because what you, these questions will help you pull the emotion out of the situation so that you can make a more rational response. Um, so, and, and these will help you pull out of that drama triangle that we were talking about a few weeks ago. So the questions are, what happened to this situation? 
What did I want to have happen? What's missing? And what's next? So the situation with the spouse, okay, what's happening? Spouse came home, said something snarky. What did I want to have happen? Well, I wanted to have him come home, tell me that I was beautiful and give me a kiss and he didn't do that. What's missing? And so on. Do you get the idea on how this works? Um, and, and it really will help you to think this, think this through. And for some of you, this is all really quite new. We talk about the stages of learning, the habits of health, really involving a lot of practice feedback and coaching so that we can become really competent. For many of us, we're at stage one, we're at that starting point. Maybe you've got some ideas on how to transform, but it's incomplete and maybe you don't have the ability or the consistency to do it. But then stage two, when you move on from unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence, you're more aware. Maybe you're reading your habits of health. Maybe you're getting feedback from your coach. You're a little more aware of what to do. And with more coaching, you can move on to conscious competence. So that stage three is where you're applying, practicing, you're getting feedback from your coach, you're developing your skills with conscious effort. Your ultimate goal is stage four or unconscious competence. So at that point, the skill of a habit is fully installed. You can do it without thinking. And that's the lifelong transformation stuff that we talk about, where you just are, it's become actually, it's become habitual. It's become almost an unconscious thing where you can continue to keep moving forward. And I'll tell you guys, surrounding yourself with like-minded people is going to be a really, really good key on this. Um, Because we find, for instance, that clients that are plugged into our community, they just have a higher rate of success. So be aware as you are looking at your relationships and at your, and your environment, look at the things that throw you off. Like think about what are the things that increase your tendency to make healthy choices? For me, it's coming to webinars like this, hanging out with you all. I like, I'm fired up for the rest of the week. And I bet a lot of you are too. Think also about the things that maybe make you more likely to make unhealthy choices. For me, it's when my head starts going too fast or if I'm tired. Um, at the end of the day, it's a high risk area for me. And so I just know to have my guard up to be more, more cautious and more careful. Actually, put into the chat box, what's one thing that really helps you to help you stay focused? Or maybe you wanna put in there something that, that throws you off, but I would love to hear, love to see that. And I'll, I'll read through the chat box later because I'd love to see a little more of your thoughts. But as you're doing that, I have someone else that I'd love to have share because he is a master at this whole concept of what happened, what did I wanna have happened, what's missing, what's next. Matt hartsock has been working with us for years. He is a fabulous partner and this has been, he and his wife Audrey have been helping a lot of people to get healthy, supporting coaches very effectively. But he's also been taking a really great journey on his own health journey. Matt, I'd love to have you share with everyone this evening some of the things you've been learning about on this topic. Oh, I would love to, Shirley. Thanks for having me on tonight. You know, one of the great lessons I've learned as an Optivia, as a client, as a coach from Dr. A, is that it's not the events of life that determine our outcome, it is our response to those events. And I was really tested with that this fall. Uh, my wife and I, we got healthy with this program. We lost 150 pounds together. And um, in August, I turned 50. And so I really wanted to just kind of like raise the bar. And I really set some um, exercise goals, some fitness goals for myself and kind of got a vision of what I wanted to look like and what I was gonna do. And I really started to work hard on those habits of exercise. And all of that came to a crashing stop in October. I was uh, diagnosed with two herniated discs in my back and it was pinching the nerve so strongly into my left leg that my, basically my left leg was almost paralyzed. I couldn't lift my foot off the floor. And that really threw me for a loop. Um, what I thought was going to be, you know, my future like wasn't happening. And um, I really started to fixate on that, started to really fixate on like what I couldn't do and what I couldn't have. And I'll tell you what guys, the longer you stay in that mode, the, the faster you start to drift down into that drama triangle below the line. I was definitely going into that victim mode. My stupid back was the villain and it started to affect all areas of my health. Um, I started to have, you know, some unhealthy thought patterns again, some unhealthy eating patterns again, 
kind of continued through the fall, through the holidays. Well, I got to the day after Christmas and I was like, wow, how did I get here? I, I have not been in this place for a very long time. And I had to ask myself those questions. What happened? Well, I know what happened. A lot of this stuff was totally out of my control. What did I want to happen? Well, I did not want to be moving backwards in my health. I can tell you that. Um, and so I really had to kind of take stock of like, okay, what was missing? Well, really guys, what was missing was I wasn't fully engaging into the four components of our program. And that's what I love about our program is that at any point, wherever you are in your journey, you can always just pick it right back up. So I made the decision that day that I was going to start working the program again. That was my what's next. And so I decided to go back on our five and one program, really embrace the structure of that, really get vulnerable and real with my coach start really plugging in with our community again. I don't know about you, but I've never gotten off one of these calls and said to myself, I want to be less healthy, right? <laughs> Always is so motivating. And then the most important thing is I really started to work in my life book. I had been sort of working at it, but now my wife and I have a weekly coffee date, which is awesome. But we use our, that time to really start working through our life book. And what happened was, my mindset shifted. It kind of did a 180 and it happened so much faster than I thought it was going to happen. And I stopped focusing on what I couldn't do and what I couldn't have and what was out of my control and really started to set goals and focus on what I could control, those micro habits, what I could do every day. And I'll tell you what, fast forward today from December 26 to today, by really focusing on building these habits strong again, I'm down 26 pounds. I'm in better shape now than I was before. We just got off an eight day cruise and I did not gain a single pound. Our habits were so strong going into that vacation, our eating habits, our hydration, our sleep, our exercise. They were so strong going into that vacation that our habits didn't take a vacation, right? And so, you know, taking a detour in your health journey is not failing, right? We're human, yeah, things happen. But when you really want to move yourself forward, you got to just ask yourself those questions. What happened? What did I want to happen? What was missing? And what's next? And I love that we have the structure, the accountability, the support. I've got a coach who is cheering me on. I've got a community that is cheering me on. You plug into the system and you work the system, guys, and it really works for you. That was fabulous, Matt. And, and as you're, you know, as Cliff and I, as your coaches, it's been phenomenal for us to watch you move through that. Um, because when you can grab a hold of what's under your control and what's not under your control and go impact the things that are under your control, amazing things can happen. So guys, give Matt some love in the chat box. He did, you did a fantastic job. Thank you for that. Now, remember at the beginning of the call, I said, okay, if you listen to all of this and then you don't actually put it into action, um, then nothing really changes, right? Well, I have some action steps for you, okay? So grab your tablet or do a screenshot or whatever. So if you're looking for some ways to take some action to improve relationships, to try to maybe move away from that hot or go system into the cool or no system, you've had something stressful happen, what do you do? Well, immediately sense your breathing slow down your breathing. That's exactly what I did before I got onto this call to talk to thousands of you all. Slow down your breathing, cool down before you speak or act, okay? Taking a drink, one of the things that Dr. Anderson taught me early on is if you're in a stressful situation, take a drink of water because look at this guys, nobody expected me to talk while I was taking that drink of water, right? And while I'm taking that drink of water, it gives me a chance to think. If it's a really st stressful situation, take two drinks of water, okay? Gives you a chance to think so that you can choose the response that you want in order to improve your health. Maybe you count to 10 before you respond. Maybe, yeah, maybe you count to 20. <laughs> maybe you need to sleep on it before you respond. You ever get one of, those, um, one of those emails late at night and you think, oh my word, and the next morning you wake up and you have clarity on how to respond well. Maybe you need to get a better night's sleep. Some of y'all are staying up way too late and not getting enough sleep to be able to function well. Take a moment to smile, be appreciative. Gratitude will diffuse 
tense emotions almost all the time and be open, be curious, desire growth when you're challenged. It's a great way to help you continue to keep moving forward in your health. So I'd love to have you put into the chat box, what's one action that you're gonna take as a result of this element this week? Put it into the chat box. I'm definitely gonna read that later but also share that with whoever it was that invited you onto this call. They're gonna to love to hear what you've learned. And then I'd also like you to take a quick moment to respond to our poll. Let's go ahead and put that up now. Just a quick check to see how we're doing. And if this is helpful to you, let us know, how did you enjoy this community time? And I think our poll, here we go, here's our poll. And as soon as you click on it, it'll go away. So um, did you find it to be excellent? Was it very good? Was it good? Was it below average? Was it, oh dear, was it poor? Um, let us know what you thought. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so as we move forward, Oh, here's another tip for you. Some of you are listening to this and thinking, oh, if only I could hear this again. Well, I have good news for you. Optavia has a YouTube channel. You can go and subscribe to that channel. And then I'd also encourage you to comment on the things that you're enjoying. You will find on that YouTube channel a whole buffet of fantastic webinars like this one on different elements and so on, different topics. So check those out. We also are available by podcast. If you go to the podcast player of your choice, look for Habits of Health, uh, you'll find us there. So join us next week for our Habits of Health community time. My friend Craig Blanchett will be speaking. Any of you who have heard Craig know that you won't wanna miss this. It's March. He's gonna be talking about, are you marching towards optimal health? See what he did there? So you won't wanna miss that. Again, congratulations to each one of you for making this a priority to be here this evening. Have a great night. This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some independent Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. In addition, this audio may have contained income or earnings representations of some independent Optavia coaches. Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results from successful sales efforts, which requires hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan, which differs from the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Optavia team.